July started off a little on the slow side, but it has picked up steam in a big way. And a lot of that, I believe, has to do with mortgage rates coming back down, the positivity around inflation, as, as much as we all hate that it is where it is, right? And the deflation hasn't happened and isn't coming to save the day. It's improving. So in today's video, I want to talk you through some surprising details and stats, including just how much inventory has decreased so far this month that is going to keep the pressure on. Let's dive in. So mortgage rates coming down under seven. This is where I believe they're going to stay. And again, more on that at the end when the predictions come. But that has helped. That has taken a little bit of the sting out of the price of things, uh, at least from a monthly payment standpoint, as prices have stayed very, very strong, increasing again 7% year over year for condos and 5%, which is on the rise for single family homes. Now inventory, again, it's down 12% from just 18 days ago. That is a pretty substantial drop. And even just over the past four days, as I record this on July 28th, it has even gone down 13 total homes, right? So that is a few percentage points just in the last few days alone. And that's a combination. You may be asking yourself, where's that coming from? It's a combination of a few, I think it was three homes expired. They're no longer on the market. Several were withdrawn. Only a few were put back up as new active listings to reset the days on market. And a handful went under contract. So in combination of that over the past 18 days and continuing through that cycle, inventory is going down, which is what we see in July normally anyway. I wasn't sure based on June if we were going to start to buck the trend of our decreasing inventory because it should have, in theory, decreased a little last month and it went up instead. We are right back on track. Now, new listings, it looks like, again, we're falling off a cliff here in July, and that is the truth. Now, that has, again, happened the previous July, the previous July before that. It's normal, right? This is nothing to freak out about. It's not a red flag. It is roughly what we should have expected. This is a little fewer, um, at least, you know, we'll see what the rest of the month brings, but a little less than I would have anticipated, even though it is low already. Um, that certainly isn't helping matters. Now, despite that, again, we are on track to see an almost identical month to what we saw last year, another strong month. That's two in a row. And if you look at these bars really for the month, uh, sorry, for the year of 2024, outside of January, it's been a very stable year in terms of the number of homes going under contract. Closed sales, we're likely to see a bit of a peak here, uh, ideally the best of the year so far. But again, that is a lagging metric, but it is good to see those volumes starting to peak. Um, after we've seen a, a few down months so far this year compared to last year. Months of inventory. So the actual total number of inventory in the single family world is coming down a little bit from 90 to about 84 um, as it stands today. And that is helping bring things back down. Now, the other side of that, I would argue, is even more impactful. And that is because we are on pace to have another very strong month uh, with nine homes already going under contract as of the 15th this month. So in theory, right, if, if that run rate is the same, we should see nearly 18 homes going under contract. We had 19 last month, which was the strongest in a long time. So we'll see where that lands. But good news for that bodes well, again, for prices, right? As that inventory drops, as the months of inventory drops, that supply demand goes more towards the sellers once again. So that's what we're seeing here with roughly stable month over month prices, uh, depending on how things play out the rest of this month. Now, days on market, again, still very, very low, nothing crazy. I'm, I almost want to delete that slide. If you think I should delete those slides going forward, or at least until something changes, drop it in the comments. Let me know if you want to see them gone, because it feels like a waste of time at this point to keep reiterating the same point, that they're still low, still roughly the same Nothing big to expect in the near future. Now, months of inventory for condos and townhomes is taking a nice chunk off, and that is because of the imbalance between how few, I'll say, new listings there have been and the amount of homes that have gone under contract. And we'll get to speed here in a minute, which again is a metric that I developed to help explain those two and how they're related. Price is staying very, very stable for condos. Days on market creeping up a little bit, um, but again, still incredibly low compared to uh, 2021 and prior. Now, speed. Again, speed is the comparison of the number of new listings that we've had and the number of homes that have gone under contract in a given month. Thought about in another way, how many new listings do we have to have before one home goes under contract? And generally speaking, we're around one and three quarters. Um, this is an incredibly low month, the lowest, or at least we're on pace to see the lowest um, speed since early 2021. So this has been an incredibly strong month. Again, that's a combination here of two things. 
lower new listings than expected, and a strong, potentially our strongest month to date in terms of the number of homes going under contract. So it would make sense that that would be our best month or our fastest moving month so far this year. Again, if we break that out into longer time frames and look at it a little bit longer for six months and 12 months, things are trending downward. They've been trending downward for the better part of a year and a half, um, and that is likely to creep down a little bit further, but I don't think we're going to break that 1.5 barrier. I think we, again, stay around our average of about 1.7, 1.75 or so. And again, that just is a measure of how fast things are moving. Um, if we see a lot of new listings and not as many going under contract, that number is going to jump up. Just a nice way that I, I like to look at things that helps me make sense of how fast things are moving um, in the market. Now, projection time. And this is, again, what nobody knows. Nobody has a crystal ball. But I felt that I've had a good finger on the pulse so far this year and over the past few years. Mortgage rates coming down. And I anticipate with the Fed likely to cut rates again in September, they are likely to come down even more. Um, not going to reach the fives. I don't even think we're going to get under, I'll say, 6.5. Um, but we should stay under seven for the rest of the year, bring any huge surprises. And you may be thinking, well, the election's coming up. Is that going to have an impact? There should be no direct impact on that, um, you know, regardless of who wins. That's not really on my radar. I've not seen any data proving that if a certain party, a certain candidate wins or loses, that anything in particular happens with the housing market or mortgage rates. So put that one out of your head for now. Inventory wise, again, this is normal to see this happen in July. Um, and What's a little bit crazy is the amount of new listings. Again, we're likely to see about 27% fewer than we saw last July. That is an alarming drop. We'll see what the rest of July brings, right? We've had one view halfway through the month, and then we get a surprise over the second half of the month. I don't think it's going to be enough to close the gap. I would expect it's a little bit lower, maybe 20%, maybe a little under 20 um, But that is just, it's not enough. We don't have enough new listings. And yeah, we have fewer homes going under contract, 7% during the same uh, month last year, if all things stay on the pace that they're on, that's going to lead to inventory reducing. Very, very simple math here. But this gridlock, we're coming to an end here. There was a gridlock where I think buyers felt that they had some more leverage, which was a good thing for them for the first time in years. I truly believe that that's going to erode here um, over the next 45 to 60 days. I don't anticipate there being a lot of relief. I think there will still be some values in the fall. There always are. But the positivity when it comes to inflation and ongoing likely rate cuts, um, or even, again, just the assumption that it may happen, is putting more confidence into the market that is going to help people make the move that they may have been hesitant to make, um, even if it's just a quarter point difference. That ends up being a big deal for some people. So price-wise, again, another strong month for single-family homes. Those are likely flat going forward in terms of pricing. Condos are also looking flat. So we are in a very balanced, nice point here. And I don't see a reason why that should really change. So, you know, obviously I'm not done yet, but if you have any questions, you can hit me any of these ways you see here. But I want to give you a little bit of detail about what I expect all of this to mean for you. So if you were looking to buy a home in Ocean City, the sooner you start the process, the better. We don't know what options are going to come available. It's everybody's favorite question, right? You may see something that checks a lot of boxes, but not quite all of them. What's coming next, right? Am I going to miss out on one? Um, we don't know. We don't know. We can't possibly ever know. We can look back over the past year or so and say, what are the odds, right? Have we seen anything better that has been a better fit, been a better price, whatever it is? We don't know. But the sooner you start the process, the better feel you get for the market coming up. And why I also advise that is we're going to have some pretty big changes coming starting in August. There's going to be more videos coming out soon um, about those. So if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe down below and turn on notifications because I'm going to talk you through. There are big changes coming with the way that real estate agents and buyers and sellers operate about what paperwork is needed, about who pays their agent's commission. That's a big deal. And that is changing in about two weeks. So... If you haven't already started, the sooner you start, the better, right? The last thing that I would want somebody to do is wake up in December and say, hey, this house is great. I'm going to call an agent, right? Who I haven't spoken to, I have no relationship with. I just want to see the house. And then all of a sudden you find out, wait a second, I have to sign this document that's going to tell you, and we have to agree what I'm going to compensate you, the agent, before I can even see the house. If you're not mentally ready for that, if you don't understand why that's the case and that that's going to be the case with every agent across the board going forward, um, you don't need that stressor, right? It's an emotional process as it is. It's a big deal. You want to get educated. You want to prepare yourself. 
for what's coming um, so that when the right opportunity comes, you are truly ready. You are fully aware of what your capabilities are, what your responsibilities are going to be as a buyer um, and how you can potentially, I'm not going to use the word avoid, how you can subsidize some of the cost of your representation, which is still important to have versus working directly through the agent who has fiduciary responsibilities to the seller. Um, and you then don't have your own independent representation. But again, save that for next week. Um, start sooner than later. Sellers, that's going to also impact you. But as far as inventory competition, all of that, you're in a very, very good spot right now. In the fall, we're going to see inventory start to pick up if all bodes like it has in years past. And it'll get some more competition. Um, as we're coming out of the summer here, the heavy hitters, right, who are renting for big bucks are down here. July and beginning of August, this would be the time to get yourself out there um, before the other competition does. And while the people who are most likely to be able to buy your home may be in town. So with that said, I appreciate you hanging out with me. Again, if you have any questions, you can either drop them in the comments below or reach out any of the ways you see in the description. So thank you. I'll see you next time.